Okay, good morning everybody. Um, as Dave mentioned, uh, David Brash, Architecture Program Manager at ARM. Um, what I've done is I've tried to pull together some slides across the company, um, some corporates, some from the different divisions, and tried to kind of put a flavour of uh, what I think is relevant in what we're doing to Lenaro, um, Linux and Android. I was glad to see everything all sort of mentioned uh, in dispatches yesterday. Um, so with that, I shall uh, try to stick to time. Okay, so one of the sort of things I thought it's by way of an introduction, I still have to kind of pinch myself to realize that we've now shipped 30 billion processors. And this equates to about 22 million a day, which in fact this year it might be a million an hour. So that's the kind of rate of processors that are being kicked out. Um, and really I think there's a lot of parallels between ARM and the open source because ARM has 2,000 employees with a huge hinterland of partners and things, just like the open source. So that's why these numbers are so large and it's just the kind of significance of um, organizations like Lenaro and uh, uh, yourselves and, and your own organization. So just an indication of where we are, about 8 billion processors shipped last year. All areas have got good growth. Um, mobile is still the largest, but um, as you can see, significant other areas. And we'll be concentrating here on the A profile, which is, is um, with memory management and virtual memory. So the other point to make is that um, the partnership creates cool products and uh, that's things you want to buy but actually literally it, it does matter as well that we, um, uh, we take consideration and power and, and power matters. So both in the mobile and increasingly in, in tailored applications as well. As uh, Dave mentioned yesterday, he hates fans. Apart from the fan club, his own personal fan club. And so, this is really just an introduction as to um, what ARM's doing um, related to IP and software. So, there's a whole load of IP that goes into the, the CPUs, um, GPUs, and related and software on top of that, of which uh, Roger Teague and many of uh, his staff are here talking about the various flavors of that but also in terms of the tools in the development area. And so I'm going to try in this talk and just sort of illustrate some of the areas we've been working on, um, how they affect you. We'll start with V7 and kind of move to V8. So that's the, the sort of way I've, um, I've tried to lay this out. So I don't know whether people quite realize, but it, it's probably two to three years from the start of doing a CPU to actually ending up in product. So by the time you've gone through all the microarchitecture and you then simulated the thing. Uh, you can then move from gate level simulations into FPGAs, prototype silicon, and finally into product. And the point I'm sure people are aware of here, you really can't start the software development early enough. And particularly for something like V8, which is a new architecture, proving that architecture ahead of actually taping out silicon and doing things is been absolutely key. So models are extremely important and gaining in importance. Um, the V-stream, D-stream terminology is where ARM's debugger can be used with a virtual interface such that it can go into the, the debug architected part of our emulators and then transition onto actual hardware. And then obviously, once you're into products, um, you've got connections for that, etc. and you, you've, you've got hardware running good speed. Um, we do work on GNU tools, as people are aware. I know uh, Richard Amstrud's got a session, I think, on Thursday. Uh -huh. We'll talk a little bit more about that, as well as what we do within our own ARM tools that we've been using uh, in the V8 world, developing both GNU and ARM in parallel, and using the ARM tools for the architecture validation work. So starting with the cores and the core features, I'll just put this up by, again to kind of illustrate Cortex A15 and A7. This is the latest cores from ARM, brings in the features that was all announced uh, well over a year ago now. Um, in fact, nearly two years since we actually announced the architectural features, the cores were announced last year and uh, with virtualization extensions and the large physical address space, it's new page format. <coughs> a key thing here is that a lot of the development work to date in that, as was, um, I know there was talks yesterday on Big Little, that was done on either emulation and using A9 type hardware, but increasingly the models that I, sp I spoke about, and Lenaro has been involved in those models as well. So it's a, a 
kind of constant theme here from me, the importance of models through this, uh, through this talk. But first hardware is emerging, and if Steve Bannister's in the room, I don't know if Steve's here, yeah, he's up the back. I know Steve's got one of our early uh, test chips um, on, uh, for, for doing that big little evaluation. And again, I'll um, kind of illustrate that a little bit later on in the talk too. So, starting to come through. Uh, the debugger I mentioned with the V&D stream, it's got different views. So, um, on the uh, left-hand side, I've always got to get my left and right right watching, but on the left-hand side, um, it's showing kind of the, the different targets, whether they're powered up or down. Um, the middle view is just showing some of the registers that are available in the higher levels, so the secure monitor on the hypervisor level, so you can do layered software developments, whether it's secure boot, some of the virtualizer work that we've been um, promoting and, and, and doing, and then um, over to those, the right hand side, more conventional for uni or uni processor or SMP work, and just views of context. So um, I'm not saying it's the only way, but ARM has got a tool chain here. It does fit with open source as well as the own ARM compiler. And uh, linking into the next slide, there's also a profiling tool within this environment as well, which as we get hardware becomes increasingly important because then you can optimize that software. So a lot of the software to, uh, to date is um, emulated empirical data, uh, you're trying to get logical correctness, and then you move into how do I make sure this is performant, where are the hotspots, etc. And down the bottom right hand corner, I put on there a, a, a little symbol of a dongle, which uh, SDD have, which is a, a way of synchronizing up to three power supplies. So you can actually do some power measurements, which again ties back to my uh, power is everything, particularly it's a traditional arm strength, and we see it uh, an important one. Uh, currently and going forward. So in terms of big little, there's the kind of one statement, but what I wanted to try and illustrate here was there's uh, more than one approach. So uh, there's three different forms here. You can either have a migration where you switch from cluster A to cluster B. I know that was one of the, the topics uh, yesterday. There's a second way of doing it where you could uh, pair up CPUs and move big and little in a, in, in a pair across and potentially have the two clusters live at the same time. And there's a third option shown down the bottom where we have um, an MP system across uh, two or more clusters. They could be asymmetrical. Um, so this one's shown with, with two on one side and, and, and four on the other. And uh, all three models are um, potentially applicable. And I think this is one of the attractions for me with ARM is that from the point of virtualization now it's not necessarily the fact that we'll do things the same way as they've been done in the desktop or established practice. When we start looking at low power, there's all sorts of other ways of looking at things. And uh, I think many people in this room are going to uh, hopefully contribute to that and what we do. So looking at the next slide, I just put up a couple of the, the first examples. And Nico, who's sitting down the front, um, published an article not that, not that long after that we'd actually um, announced the architecture and this was around ideas as to how you would do this pairing of CPUs so um, I'd like to thank Nico for that and it's good to see that this is the, <coughs> the, the industry doing, doing things and people involved as I'm doing it all the ideas certainly shouldn't be coming out of our we always see ourselves a bit of a catalyst in the process rather than kind of owning which direction some of these things go in. The example code that I put on is the uh, <coughs> cluster to cluster code. Uh, that's now available through Monaro, and I'm reliably informed by Steve that in the next few weeks there'll be some NP patches provided, so ARM will be starting to feed through some of its ideas on the third option. But again, we encourage the community to pick up, put in their ideas, etc., and uh, work on this with us. So I mentioned models before. Um, this is a fairly kind of rich indication of the kind of things that we see where platforms are going. So you've got a couple of clusters. You've also got uh, a GPU environment, the some I/O and, and debug. So over recent years, we've started to model the debug architecture, which we we, we didn't really do previously. It tended to wait for for hardware and, and, and validation. 
It's now very much part of, uh, started in V7, very much part of the V8 modeling activity. We're prototyping some of the GPU stuff today, so I wouldn't say we've got models available with that on uh, general release. Um, but certainly either single cluster or dual cluster, the big little cluster, and Nolan Arrows had uh, copies of the, the big little model to play with. And um, they have, as I mentioned, been central to lots of, lots of the work to date. Um, the window up in the top right is a bit difficult to see, but there's a demo that we ran actually on a, um, a V8 model where we had a, an Apache server running on a 64-bit kernel. We had uh, uh, a subset of uh, Ubuntu desktop with Mozilla. I haven't eaten breakfast yet, so I don't quite know what happened. <coughs> but um, so we had a, a, a 32-bit desktop, and we can we can we can play around with a sort of a basic web server on a model, and, and uh, use the virtualization layer to, to switch between the 64 and 32 kernels. So that's the kind of level of work that we're we're, we're getting to there, and uh, you're going to hear, I think, through the second half of this year, a lot more on <coughs> models from ARM as we look at. This is probably kind of the top end sort of model I'm illustrating here. The, the ones where we are in the kind of middle ground just now, and we're also looking at some sort of entry level model um, as well, all being consistent, all for the same address maps, um, as we start feeding material out from our. So, graphics, I mentioned those earlier. Um, the Midgard architecture is the latest architecture from our graphics group. And uh, please say it's effectively a 64 bit GPU architecture, V8 ready. Um, there's a lot of software development done in there. Um, this is the Midgard is the T600 series, so it's the follow-on to the 400s that are starting to emerge now, um, and a whole load of uh, um, API support, etc. So there's a, a broad range of standards that um, my colleagues in the, the media processing division are working on. I will just put this up to kind of sort of illustrate uh, if we take the the latest and greatest one that we've announced. Um, it is up to about 10x the performance of the, <coughs> the 400. I think the um, sort of third bullet is probably one of the most relevant here in that, um, well, we don't have everything open source. There are key elements of it open source just now. And I know that uh, my colleagues are constantly reviewing what is open source and what is not. We do live in interesting times uh, around this area, so a lot of it is uh, as much industry practice as um, arm practice here, but uh, um, you know, that's the, the, the state of play today, and we certain, certainly they're welcoming a lot of engagement with the, the open source community around uh, um, Mali GPUs, and we expect them to be appearing in more and more <coughs> designs relevant to, to Android and Linux in general. Uh, the, the last point as well is that I know that um, they've been working with Linaro on making sure that the, the Linux kernel, etc., and Mali um, couple up well for doing um, profiling, whether it's things like Perf or um, Arm Streamline. I do promise I'll stop plugging things over. I'm not uh, here to sell it all, it's just trying to use it as um, uh, illustrative. Not to say it's not good. Okay, um, changing tack a little bit onto where we are with servers. And again, another colleague of mine, Jeff Underhill, is over at the end here in the, down the front. So um, Jeff does a lot of work in uh, evangelizing this business. He came from, from AMD, so he's got history in the, in, uh, in the area. And uh, we just put up here is a, a list of the kind of key, key events that happened in the past six to nine, six to nine months. So if we... Uh, Kind of looking through that, we're now, we've been engaged with Oracle for some enterprise Java. Um, the HP announcement around Moonshot and their platforms for microservers um, is a great boost to have somebody of such status in the industry um, doing this kind of collaboration and doing it openly and making that kind of announcement. And then if we look at the, the, the bottom, we've got uh, you know, Ubuntu now have an LTS release of their server and Calzada a public demo in, in, in May, which I actually have a couple of slides on just by to illustrate that one. Uh, so <coughs> lots of uh, key elements, I'm sure you've seen different pieces and the kind of densities that they can uh, 
uh, achieve with uh, server devices in these racks and the key elements of management. And the important part here has been that, and I have this in very good authority, that uh, it just worked. So thank you to everybody for that. And this is just an illustration of how all this is, uh, is starting to come, come together. So that was um, sort of a whistle stop tour of what I, I thought were the, the kind of key elements of uh, work inside ARM. Um, on the V7 side, and if we start looking a little bit further forward, uh, this is the architecture roadmap of how features have been introduced over the years. And as we step through it, I kind of highlighted where we introduced sort of major memory management change. So in fact, if you go back to V4 and V5 and read the manual, you'll actually find that the system called processor was, was a sort of a recommendation in that, that you might have an MMU built that way. It was much more formalized. First time I had a formal memory model was the introduction of the ARM 11 class processors in V6. Um, it did need changes to page table format. Um, we then stepped up in V7, as I mentioned, by introducing large physical addresses. We needed to change from 32 to 64 bit entries, so we introduced a new page table there. <coughs> and it also had the attributes for virtualization. And now that you've got that size of page table, it was a small step to move across to V8 and introduce virtual addresses. So there's a huge amount of consistency in this 78 transition, the most recent one. And I, I really can't overemphasize that lots of work in the newer features, the A7s, the A15s, um, if people are thinking about being 64-bit ready in what they're doing, we do envisage that the, the, that synergy is going to pay dividends as people develop hypervisors or virtualizer code, etc. Um, on the V8 parts. So there is information out in the public domain. We did make the announcement um, at TechCon last October, and in fact, I had the opportunity a week later to, to talk to those of you that were in um, Florida and uh, sort of highlight that fact. So there's not a great deal more information has been um, published since that point, but we, we um, I'll come on to a slide as to our, our, our plans in a minute. Um, the TechCon talk from um, lead architect Richard Gristlesweth. Um, it's about an hour talk. If you haven't uh, listened to it or taken a look at the slides, it's a very good overview of the exception model and memory model, key features of the architecture. We did publish an overview of the instruction set so that people could see it, and hopefully people see the um, similarity and the semantics with our existing instructions. So there's a natural progression there. And we did publish the ABI documents, so again, to try and get the tool vendor and that stuff going. So the key highlight um, a point I should make is there's now, I meant to check it this morning, but it was relatively recently. This stuff has been buried in our website, and it's been on my to-do list to get it sorted for a while. They have actually put up, I believe, a clean alias, which will help people find this stuff. Um, the main documents, the instruction overview and ABI are actually in InfoCenter as well, so there's various ways of getting at it, but we're, we're, we're trying to make this a little bit more obvious for people. And the key points at the bottom, which was literally just last, uh, last Friday, um, Richard Earnshaw um, pushed up for public review the AR64 GCC. So this is the first of our V8 material to start coming upstream, and Richard's having a, a talk on that on Thursday. Um, so there's the um, SVN repository that uh, people can find that information in. So this is, as I say, the start of the V8 material coming through. So it is consistent, I believe, with what we said we'd do at TechCon last year. So we'll start upstreaming in 2012. And we are working with architecture partners and undergoing implementation. So there's quite a lot of parallel development going on, um, creating that silicon. So we do expect that you'll start seeing silicon next year, and that you'll actually start seeing, I would think, significant volumes in 2014. It's not just going to be the introduction. You may even start seeing products before the end of 2013. But um, these things do take time. Different people at different rates. It's not for me to uh, speculate what they're doing, but certainly we're trying to gear ourselves towards 
significant introductions in 2014 alongside the 32 bit architecture. Second goal I put down here is goals, is to upstream review in 2012, of which the GCC is the start, and also adopt and maintain in 2013. But um, I want to remain humble here. I think uh, Deepak made a very good point yesterday in the upstreaming process that this is not something where we believe we, we're, we're trying to kind of dump on the community. We've had to do a lot of work to get ourselves to what we think is a kind of a, a critical position of something that can be reviewed. So um, Catalan was mentioned earlier, he's been central to uh, Will Deacon's here as well somewhere in the audience. Oh, Will's up the back. Um, there are two members of the kernel community that are involved in this. There's loads of people been involved in file systems and all the other aspects, so I'm not going to kind of try and do a who's who around all the other people, but uh, um, they've all been involved in, in pulling the things together in the kind of demo that I mentioned earlier. So we expect in the next few weeks to be, and we are talking now into weeks, let's say within the Q3 time frame, um, that uh, we're going to be public with all of this stuff, so the rest of the tool chain and the Linux. And so that's why talking to you today is to just start that, that ball rolling. Um, we've, uh, <coughs> the other point to, to, to make around this as well is that, it, I think I've already made it really in the talking about the A15 and the A7, there's many developments that can start today around that that we think we can inherit because the great thing about the kind of evaluation platform for doing for those parts is they've got a terabyte physical address space. So that's more than enough to meet the kind of needs and scale beyond the four gigabyte limitations that we're starting to find for benchmarking and all the other things that we wanted to <coughs> do in a 64-bit architecture. So again, I would encourage people to take part in KVM, in UEFI, and also if you can start thinking what's the impact here for 64-bit code. KVM, I think, will be a good example because our hypervisor, the whole exception model that we've introduced for virtualization is mirrored into the V8 exception model. The V8 exception model is basically an extension of all that stuff. Um, so Mali, the only thing to really kind of revisit here is Mali already has um, some memory management capabilities. It's already taken on those that large physical address um, form factor, and it's actually has prepared itself for. Um, greater than 32 bit virtual address spaces. So we're in, we're in good shape with um, the Midgard architecture for flowing from V7 to V8 environment. And, uh, sorry, I'm just kind of gathering my thoughts on the, the different ones. So the, the last piece around this 64 bit is that uh, Reading environment, so I mentioned the silicon in, in, in process operating systems of which uh, Linux is, is uh, key and one that uh, we can start getting engaging with the, um, the broader community on effectively um, from in quotes now. Uh, hypervisors and another bit of optimization and one of our lead partners applied has, um, has started with FPGAs <coughs> as illustrated here and so they are starting to make FPGAs available to some of their key customers. So if you, um, some of you may well have been contacted by them already, but uh, I think we'll start seeing more of that in the news. At this point, ARM's not made any announcements about its plans, but I can assure you we're off developing implementations in parallel with our lead licensees. So all that's going on. In fact, I should probably make a small intimation at this point that we, there was a couple of sessions put up that were both put up sort of by invitation only around the V8. Well, in, in truth, Tomorrow's one is the only one we need to do that because we do want to have a bit of a discussion with Linaro on uh, um, some of the logistics around what we're doing here and how we can kind of help prepare the ground and get things done properly. But certainly today's session is now an open session. So if anybody wants to come and talk, I'm quite happy to talk about what we've done in the past. Some of you may have, have heard it before, but I appreciate we're in a, a new geography, etc. if you want to come and participate. And the other point that I'm quite keen on is Kiko mentioned yesterday, People have got ideas what they'd like to see, their priorities for V8, their priorities for V8 software. We'd certainly like to uh, hear about those because um, we can do a certain amount of leading and, de and deciding on a, um, what we think is appropriate 
but um, we would like to be driven by the, the community and sort of this next next stage and, and, and uh, like you have a say in, in helping set our priorities. So I think it's 12 o'clock today if I've got it right, the V8 session, but it's, it's now an open session. Please feel free to, to join it if, um, if you can be bothered. So finally, last point I've got here is just around Android, which is very much a you know, 32 bit environment today. And uh, far be it for me to say when it will happen, but I think it will, it's an inevitability. It'll be in the back of the kernel. The sooner we have a kernel, we can start doing bits around framework and we can start looking at some of the other things. So um, last little plug is that the DS5 Community Edition is actually designed for um, native development on Android. So it plugs in, it had plugged in ARM tools, but you can put GNU tools in there as well um, and sit alongside and it ties up the debugger over USB, Ethernet and Wi-Fi and uh, it's free. So it's a good introduction to some of those features. It doesn't have all the features as you might imagine, but uh, it's a good introduction to the look and feel of ARM's debugger and profiling tools. So that's uh, all I've really got to say on that. And just in conclusion, um, I don't think there's any point really putting up a summary and going back through the points that I, I, I've made, but um, there are five billion users out there. We've got this amazing challenge of um, lots of code. How do we keep code down as we bring in a new um, operating system, a, a, a new architecture? Uh, I think it's pretty exciting times for everybody to be working in, in, in this. And just the thought that even relatively small numbers of people in this room can make difference to you know the next five billion parts that we, we come out. So uh, thank you for your contributions today and uh, long may it continue. Thank you.